Hey guys, it's Orn Lu, and with the Dynasties of India expansion almost upon us, I thought that it would be helpful to go through all of the new units that are associated with this DLC, and break down their strengths, their weaknesses, their stats, what benefits they get from upgrades or civ bonuses, and that whole sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is, uh, we're going to start with the two regional units, the Elephant Archer and the Armored Elephant. Uh, these guys are each going to get their own video because they are available to three or four civilizations and we need to cover all of the distinctions between the civs. And then I think I'm going to do one civ on each of the, well, other, one video on each of the new civs. There we go. So I'll have a video on like the Hindustani unique units, the Bengali unique unit, uh, the Dravidian unique units, etc, etc. Getting right into it, we're going to start with the Elephant Archer because that is a more familiar unit to a lot of people. It used to be the unique unit of the Indian civilization. That is now, of course, going to be Hindustanis. And ironically, they do not get access to this unit anymore. Now it is only available to the Bengalis. And all of these civs get bonuses for them, by the way. The Dravidians and the Gurjaras. These are the only three civs that have access to the unit. Now... If you're thinking, okay, so we just have the Indian Elephant Archer, and now it's just available at, well, the archery range. Yes, but the unit has undergone some pretty decent changes. They, they might look similar on paper, but they are a fair bit different. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through all of the changes that this unit has gotten since the, uh, well, just the regular Elephant Archer unique unit that we see in DE right now as I'm recording it. Now, because this is a regional unit and not a unique unit and also available at the archery range, this is going to be mostly nerfs, and I'm going to put them on screen because uh, there's a lot to go through, but there are a couple of positives here. Now, to get right into it, Elephant Archers, both regular and elite, have minus one pierce armor. The elephant archers in DE have, um, or just DE right now, have three pierce armor. These guys only have two, both regular and elite. Both of these guys also have minus 50 HP compared to their uh, pre-Dynasties of India, in Indian civilization version. So regular elephant archers now have 230 HP and elite elephant archers have 280 HP. And in the uh, previous version, it was 280 HP for regular Elephant Archers, and then 330 HP for Elite. So just minus 50 HP across the board for both. Also, in case you didn't notice, the Elite Elephant Archer has the skin of the uh, existing pre-Dynasties of India Elite Archer, and this uh, is a new unit icon entirely. But moving along with the nerfs, Elephant Archers, both regular and elite, now take 9 seconds longer to train. But remember, this is at the archery range that you're making this unit instead of the castle, so this makes a lot more sense. But now they take 34 seconds to train as opposed to 25 seconds. So, you know, definitely a, a pretty decent amount of time it takes to train a unit, more than pretty much any other archer or cavalry or infantry unit. But still, you can make these guys at archery ranges, and that means you can spam them out more easily. This one, you know, you wouldn't notice really unless you look, took a look in the Genie Editor. Elephant Archers, you know, as the Indian unique unit, had negative two Cav Archer armor. I mean, these guys are essentially chonky Cav Archers. This meant that units that get special bonus damage against Cav Archers, like Elite Skirmishers and Camel Archers, got even more bonus damage against them. Now, guys, they have negative seven Cav Archer armor. So, you know, units like Elite Skirmishers and Camel Archers are getting seven additional attack on top of their bonus damage. So these guys are going to be much, much weaker to Elite Skirmishers and Camel Archers. And I'll show these guys off in combat in just a little bit. But yeah, that's definitely a big hit to the unit. Makes them much more counterable. In addition, the Elephant Archers uh, from the castle back in the day had a bit of bonus damage against buildings. Uh, they had, for the non-elite version, three damage against buildings uh, and three against stone defense on top of that. So stone defense being uh, stone walls, towers, castles, all that good stuff. And yeah, the elite version had four damage against regular buildings and then another four against stone defense. That's now all gone. The unit has just no bonus damage against buildings whatsoever. 
Lastly, the Elite Upgrade. It has the same cost, 1,000 food and 800 gold, but it takes longer to research. Now it has a research time of 80 seconds as opposed to 60 seconds. So that's a lot of nerfs to the Elephant Archer. This is going to be compensated in part by the fact that all three of the sieves that have this unit also have bonuses for them, but it's not all bad. One of the two buffs for this unit is that it now moves a little bit faster, 0.1 tiles per second faster. They used to have a movement speed of 0.8 tiles per second, uh, now, which is the same as an unupgraded villager, you know, without wheelbarrow or anything. And now they have a movement speed of 0.9 tiles per second, which is the same as an unupgraded militia, you know, all the way up through champion, you know, without squires. So that is a little bit of a buff to the unit. I mean, as you can just see here, they do move around a bit faster. You can get into combat a bit more easily, especially since they're coming out of archery ranges. They can move, you know, you can have them more on the front lines. And they're just a much more massable unit, even if they aren't quite as strong. Also, to reflect this, elephant archers are now a little bit cheaper. They cost 90 food and 70 gold, as opposed to the 100 food and 70 gold of the pre-dynasties of India era. So, 10 food cheaper, making them, again, a little bit easier to mass. And the upshot of all of this is that the elephant archers are going to be overall weaker, faster, and cheaper. Now, with all of this in mind, let's go ahead and look at the three different civilizations that have access to their unit and what sort of bonuses apply to them. All right, so here we have one elephant archer from each of the three civilizations. I am playing as the Bengalis here, and there is the Dravidians, and there is the Gurjaras. So I'm just going to go through each of their tech trees and just show you guys what these uh, stats are looking like with full upgrades. So. Uh, since I am the Bengalis, I'll start with that. You can see 300 HP fully upgraded, 7 plus 4 attack, plus 4 and plus 6 armor, so 8 pierce armor in total, and then um, 7 range. Relevant bonus here, elephant units are tw getting 25% less bonus damage, and that's going to be relevant against halbs and skirmishers, as uh, you, know, you can see now with uh, them having so much anti archer armor and they're going to be more resistant to conversion. Furthermore, they also benefit from their unique tech, Pikes, Rathas, and Elephant units, that includes Elephant Archers, attack 20% faster. So you don't get Thumb Ring with this civilization, but you essentially get the effect of Thumb Ring, uh, at least the faster fire rate of, you know, effect of Thumb Ring, for your Elephant Archers. In fact, you should be firing even a little bit faster than uh, a generic one with Thumb Ring. So, you're going to be firing at least pretty quickly. Your accuracy isn't going to be perfect. Um, I believe it's 90 ac base accuracy for the uh, Elephant Archer. And it's still going to be, I think, a pretty important boost to that unit and its DPS. I mean, anything that has a fairly low attack but a high attack speed, buffing that up is just going to be more uh, important than usual. Anyway, as far as upgrades go for the Bengalis, we have um, Parthian Tactics available, no Thumb Ring, as I just mentioned, as we have um, uh, Pikes. Also, no Cav Archers for any of the civs that have Ellie Archers. At the Stable, uh, we have both Bloodlines and Husbandry, so both of these uh, very important cavalry upgrades are available to the Bengalis. And then at the Blacksmith, we have all the Archer Armor upgrades and all of the Archer Attack upgrades. So this is all going to be very relevant and important for your Elephant Archers. Bengalis, as you can see, have good Ellie Archers. Now, the last thing that's going to be important to mention with Elephants is the Monastery, and that is going to be Heresy and Faith. No Heresy for Bengalis, but they do have Faith, so have faith in this civilization, guys, because it has faith in itself, I guess. So that is going to be the Bengali Elephant Archer. Again, here is another quick look at their stats when fully upgraded. Lots of Pierce Armor for these guys. And these are just going to be, I think, the most well-rounded of the three Ellie Archer sieves. Moving along to the Dravidians, you can already see at first glance that we are looking at, you know, weaker base stats in general. So 11 attack, only 280 HP, plus 3 melee armor, and then 6 Pierce Armor in total, and then 7 range. So let's take a look at their tech tree to see why this is the case and what bonuses are relevant. So right off the bat, we can see Skirmishers and Elephant Archers attack 25% faster with the Dravidians. So that's even faster than the Bengalis with the Pike's unique tech. That's only 20%. Dravidians get 25% attack. And oh wait, they also get Thumb Ring. So 
I don't know the exact specifics, but the Dravidian Elephant Archers should be up there um, for the very fastest attacking land units in the game. It should be up there in the realm of like Ethiopian Arbalests, Samurai, Mangudai, all that sort of good stuff. So really high damage output with the Dravidian Elephant Archers. In addition, they also get the Medical Core uh, unique tech. Their elephant units regenerate 20 HP per minute. That's not much, but that is the same as a pole villager in the Imperial Age. So for reference, that is going to be how much HP you are regenerating. Not very much, but considering how expensive and high HP these units are, it's going to be pretty worth it. Notably, they are not going to be benefiting from the Woot Steel technology. That is for um, infantry and then your <laughs> two cavalry units. And that brings us to the upgrades that the Dravidian uh, Elephant Archers benefit from. We've got Thumb Ring, like I said, but no Parthian tactics, so they don't get that extra bonus damage versus pikemen and the extra armor, of course. And then no Bloodlines or Husbandry, so your Elephant Archers are going to be the slowest of the three Ellie Archer civilizations. Slow, high damage, but a little bit lacking in uh, defense without Parthian tactics, but still you do have all of the blacksmith upgrades. That is quite important. And then at the monastery, you can see once again, no heresy, but we do have faith. So that is going to be the Dravidian elephant archer in a nutshell. Higher damage than the Bengali, but not quite as speedy or tanky. And then last we have the Gurjara elephant archers and they have their 300 HP, they also have husbandry, 11 attack, 7 range, but look at this weird armor distribution. They have 6 melee armor and only 4 pierce armor, so they're better in melee combat, but they are the weakest of the three here when it comes to ranged combat. Now let's go ahead and check why that is. So first, mounted units deal plus 50% bonus damage. You might think that could be relevant, relevant with the elephant archer, uh, but... No, no, Elephant Archers don't get any bonus damage, especially not without Parthian tactics, so we can just kind of forget about that. However, the Gurjara Eli Archers are going to be benefiting a lot from the uh, Kshatriya's unique tech. Military units cost minus 25% food. Hey, guess what? Elephant Archers cost a lot of food, so now you are going to be getting, um, I believe, 67 food uh, for these Elephant Archers. So... That's pretty reasonable. 67 food, 70 gold. That's only a little bit more expensive on the food than a knight, and even a bit cheaper on the gold cost. So these are pretty spammable, especially with your team bonus with uh, your elephant units being created 25% faster. But wait, there's more. There's also the Frontier Guards unique tech, where your elephant archers get that plus four melee armor. Now, this is going to help them against non- elephant counter melee units. So it's not gonna, really going to do a whole lot against halberdiers, but it is going to be useful against things like knights and hussars, uh, swordsmen, whatever, uh, anything like that. Uh, three of the four civs have infantry unique units here, so that's going to be helping against all of those. So it's definitely relevant, as they say. As far as their tech tree goes, as you can see, we have thumb ring, but no Parthian tactics. And then we also have Bloodlines and Husbandry at the stable. Blacksmith isn't quite as pretty because we're missing Ring Archer armor. That means, of course, you're missing Ring Archer armor and Parthian tactics, making you pretty weak against ranged units. And then lastly, the, as, the, as the inverse of the other two civs, the Gurjadars have, have Heresy, but they do not have Faith. But Heresy is generally more useful anyway, so your Elephant Archers are at least getting that uh, going for them and that is going to be the Gurjara Elephant Archer. Now, of course, the all-important question, which of the Elephant Archers beats the other Elephant Archers? I mean, is this the most important question for, like, gameplay reasons? No, but it's still one that I know you guys want the answer to. All right, guys, here we are on the field of Elephant Archer battle. So, once again, I am going to be the Bengalis in the blue, and then the Gurjaras are in the yellow, and then the Dravidians are in the green. So here is Bengalis versus Gurjaras, Gurjaras versus Dravidians, and Bengalis versus uh, Dravidians. So this is post imp, all upgrades, and then the Gurjaras, because of Kshatriyas, get one more elephant. Everyone else has eight. So once I click this outpost, the very slow bloodshed will begin. Who is going to win, I wonder? 
I actually have no idea I didn't test this ahead of time, so I'm, I'm gonna be learning with you guys. Obviously, this isn't the most scientific test in the world, but hey, it's something. Anyway, the Gurjaras looks like they are starting to fall. Missing all of those armor upgrades is kind of a huge deal, and they get extra melee armor anyway. Oh, looks like the Dravidian ones are starting to fall over here. I mean, they are regenerating HP slowly. Yeah, you can see the Gurjara ones getting defeated in approximately the same time by the Bengalis as well as the Dravidians. The Dravidians... Wow, that was almost the exact same time. Dravidians having fewer Eli archers left, though. This was, of course, just uh, because of all of the extra pierce armor. Then, in the battle of the century, <laughs> I think the Bengalis are going to win this one. Good thing I randomly selected the Bengalis, being the first Civ alphabetically of the, the three. Oh, I think we got this, guys. No amount of HP regen is going to save you here. That was, of course, a much slower fight. So here is the elephant pecking order. It goes Bengalis at the top, Dravidians in the middle, and then Gurjara's on the bottom. Very important information for you to know when you're in all of those gigantic elephant archer fights or something. Alrighty guys, so last for this video, we're going to do just some basic tests with our elephant archers against some uh, regular units that you'll be fighting in the Imperial Age. Um, obviously this won't be an exhaustive test. And I'm not going to do, like, Elephant Archers versus every single unit. But we do have all three Elephant Archer representatives here. Same colors as before. I am Bengalis, green is the Dravidians, and yellow is the Gurjadas. Uh, we're going to be fighting some just regular, fully upgraded uh, Arbalests. Nothing too special. But, you know, we have our eight or nine Elephant Archers against... Uh, what did I say? Uh, 20 Arbalests? And we have to imagine that the Elephant Archers are going to be clapping right here. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. The scientific process is being invalidated by you two. I really don't think it matters. You can see that the Gurjadas are not doing uh, as well. And the Bengalis, they take them down the slowest, but looks like they probably have the most HP left right now, although with the regeneration, the Dravidian should be getting there quite quickly. And then the Gurjadas uh, did end up losing some Elephant Archers because of their lack of Pierce Armor, but uh, they should be doing better in the tests against the melee units. Alright, so same exact setup, but this time we have some fully upgraded Spanish Paladins, and um, remember, they're not that much more cheap, I guess, than Elephant Archers. I mean, 60 food, 75 gold versus... 90 food, 70 gold. So it's just going to be 12 paladins versus the 8, 9 elephant archers. And let's see how they're going to perform. This is where we would imagine that the Gurjaras would be doing a bit better. Of course, if I use the powers of micro, then I would be doing even better. But, you know, just like my real games, we're going to pretend that micro doesn't exist. Anyway, you can see that the Dravidians and the Bengalis are getting absolutely chopped up. Bengali's lasting a little bit longer. No, not the outpost. And this is where the Gujaras are doing a bit better. But, of course, they are all going to get wrecked by the Paladins. This is a situation where population efficiency is going to be more important than cost efficiency. But, as you can see, the uh, Gujaras are still doing the best in that situation. Already, same dealio, but this time with just some generic fully upgraded halberdiers. There are going to be 16 of these guys versus the 8-9 elephant archers. And this is where I think the Dravidians should be getting absolutely wrecked. And now we're going to see if the extra armor for melee for Gurjadas, or if the extra bonus damage resistance is going to be more impactful for the Bengalis. So, let us begin. Regardless, this should be an absolute slaughter. Oh, you bet it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course, Dravidians go first. 
and it looks like the Bengalis and the Gurjadras are going in at around the same time as well. So yeah, Halbs, clearly a uh, cost-efficient counter. Like, I probably didn't even do full justice right there. But yeah, that is going to be Halbs in action. Alrighty guys, so this is going to be the last test for today, and it's going to be against fully upgraded elite skirmishers. You can see we got 16 of them versus our regular contingents of elephant archers, and this is where I think we're really going to see the negative cav archer armor uh, come into play, because elite skirmishers get two bonus damage against the uh, cav archer armor class. Anyway, uh, Bengalis I think should be performing the best by a pretty sizable margin here because they get the bonus damage resistance, and they have 8 Pierce Armor anyway. Well, I guess uh, it shouldn't matter as much with Dravidians, because they uh, are still canceling out all of the regular attack. Elite Skirmishers are going to be doing likely better against the Gurjadas. Eh, I guess. Eh. Higher damage is also pretty nice. Anyway, you can see that the Bengalis are actually going to win this. The Dravidians are barely going to win this, and the Gurjadras end up losing. Oh my god, there's 18 HP, so with like literally any amount of micro, the Skirmishers probably win that. Uh, because with all of the lack of micro, uh, Elephant Corp, or Medical Corp, is getting the, uh, the most effect possible. But you can see that Bengalis are definitely going to be the Elephant Archer masters against Skirmishers, relatively speaking. This still wasn't a great engagement for anybody. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this Elephant Archer video for the New Civilizations. I thought that, you know, there was a lot of interesting comparisons here, and it'll be really interesting to see how these guys are going to be used in standard play, which of the new civs are going to have the most success with them, and which are going to be using them the least. So definitely leave a like if you enjoyed. Next overview um, I will be doing on the Armored Elephants. So these are some really interesting guys, and I'll see you guys next time for that one.